Fire Emblem Heroes and summoning are pretty synonymous with each other. It's kind of the main draw of the game. You go and summon for characters you like. Sometimes you get very lucky. Sometimes you don't get lucky. Sometimes you get even worse than unlucky. That's how the game's been since day one. However, it's definitely a lot more structured nowadays than it was maybe back in 2017, 2018, where they kind of just threw anything and everything at the wall until they came up with a consistent pattern that we know today. And because of that, I do want to go over basically a history of banners and just lesser known facts about them in general. And so that's what we're going to be doing here today, starting all the way as far back as 2017, where we just got random banners whenever they decide to drop. Nowadays, we know when we can expect certain banners to show up, whether that's new seasonals, reruns, just certain skill banners, etc. Before this point, though, it was really just up in the air as the calendars they showed off really didn't have much, if anything, at the time. And because of that, they would generally add new units through these random banners that had maybe up to six focuses on it. Maybe it was Erica, Ephraim, Klein, Sanaki with Reinhardt and Owen, or maybe they had something that was completely themed, such as a Blazing Blade banner, maybe with something such as Ninian, Rebecca, Lucius, Raven, all those essentially. It really just was whenever they decided to drop these banners, they would do it in whatever fashion they decided to do it in. And that also applied to the random off-focus banners that weren't just new heroes. Take, for example, the Grand Hero Battle banners that we had that really didn't have any correlation with the Grand Hero in particular. For example, a battle against Camus had Owen and Jafar. And then if you were to go against Xander, for example, there was Krom and Cordelia and... Arthur and Lind, although Arthur is from Fates, it really didn't feel like there was any sort of correlation. They just kind of threw units on there just for the sake of throwing units on a banner. And that was relatively the same when it came to these new hero banners too, where they just kind of threw focuses on there. Although something to note when it came to these banners is that they didn't show up in the main story because by that point, we already had a set amount of chapters given to us. So they didn't necessarily add anything new to it, but rather they just threw them in the paralogue. So when you first start out the paralogues, you see something like Erica, Ephraim, or Eldigan, Lachesis, and Nino and Jafar. And then afterward, it started becoming a bit of seasonals, but you could also see throughout it, there was also a mix of new heroes, whether that was Shadows of Valentia, New Mystery, Sacred Stones, Braves, so on and so forth. They didn't make it a directly seasonal focused area until probably the second Christmas banner, because prior to that, they would still throw seasonals in here, but you could still see the occasional brave heroes, the far-fetched heroes, which I'll get into in a second, or even some random ones such as a drift or even a xenolog, which didn't necessarily have to do with banners, but they didn't necessarily focus heavily on just seasonals here. And going to the Farfetch'd Heroes for a second, this was also a semi-popular banner that really only ran for two years, but it took some of the highest scoring CYO units in the respective year that didn't necessarily win, and they threw them on a banner with a guaranteed PRF and some other cool premium stuff at the time. So whether that was your Mias, your Dorcas's, your Lutes, or even Owain, Loki, Cliff, and all those, they just threw them on here and they always had a PRF, because that was really the theme of the Farfetch'd. Although for something a bit more consistent, you had the main story banners, which were weren't really as consistent as I was almost about to make it be because for the most part 2018 new heroes banners really only consisted of three units for the most part sometimes I had four not always but sometimes it did and it was always accompanied by alts whether that was another Krom or another Reinhardt and another Olwen this was basically ascended heroes before the gimmick basically existed and because of that you would only ever really expect two new heroes and then a guaranteed alt although the only times this didn't really apply were for the genealogy banners which pretty much only ever had new heroes you had Ishtar you had Ares and Lean and you also had stuff like Lewin with Quan and Sylvia they didn't necessarily stick with one thing until much later but one of the things I also wanted to talk about before we get into later banners was demotes demotes prior to them just telling us whether or not they're a four star focus was always up in the air a lot of the time we just kind of had to guess whether our unit had enough of a good kit or some other miscellaneous non-factor that we just kind of had to piece together to determine whether or not a unit was going to be our demo or not. They never told us until the banners just ended. It wasn't exactly the greatest thing because people just never really knew what to expect from a unit, whether or not they're going to be way more accessible in the future or if this was their best time to get them. That's just kind of how it was for a while until eventually they decided to highlight who the four stars and three stars were. At some point, we were also able to guess when a unit 
it was going to be a demote because usually they occupied the third slot in a new banner. That's kind of how it went. You usually have like a really good five star. You have a second five star, which may or may not be really good. You have the demo and then you have the star of the banner at the end of the trailer. This was a bit different in 2018 because there weren't four unit banners and it was way harder to guess. I think the one that really caught people off guard the most had to be with Ares and Lean, where Ares was just a really good sword cap at the time. With Dark Mistletane being a slaying special spiral weapon, it was pretty good for its time, but people were pretty convinced that Ares wasn't going to be a four star because, well, considering the units on the banner at the time, he seemed way too good to be a demo, only for them to be a demo because Lean had a Veiler. And the rule of thumb after that kind of just became if they have a Veiler, they're going to be five star locked for whatever reason because Veilers are just that premium and that good. And speaking of demotes and four stars, I quickly want to go over this very short lived four star focus banner that was essentially the size of a legendary banner, but only consisted of four star focuses. And these were just called four star and five star heroes. And this ran for only a total of three banners. It consisted of three star and four star units that you could also get as five stars, but the rate for getting a four star focus was significantly higher, which wasn't something that was commonplace until after a certain period of time. But back then it was around the beginning of 2018. so maybe just almost a year into the game, they decided to drop these four star, five star banners, which was basically a legendary banner for demotes. And there's probably a good reason why it didn't last because I don't think a lot of people were going out of their way to summon for a four star able or whatever the case may be, but it was still one of their most obscure banners because they just kind of came and went with no rhyme or reason. And then after that point, we kind of just settled into what we know nowadays, but they also had some other stuff that they eventually introduced, whether that was the four star focus on seasonal banners, starting with the Valentine's Valentian banner with Alm and Conrad and Rudolph and all those, or even Sparking that later came down the road with the Fates banner that had Midori and Rinka, and eventually more sparks on legendary mythic banners and just a lot of other banners in general. That wasn't something they immediately added with Fate Pass. It was a later thing they added down the road. And occasionally they would drop something at the end of a trailer saying, oh, look, there's an instant three and four star, which we do get from time to time, but it was something they just never really do nowadays outside of maybe certain events in the game, whether that's a midpoint or a brand new game gets announced or it's just something, just some new gimmick in the game. That's usually when they do it, but otherwise it's relatively inconsistent. And as far as just general history of banners go, that's going to be about it. But there's also just a lot of miscellaneous stuff that you may not even know, including including units who just never appeared on a banner, which as far as I'm aware was only Azama. Azama hasn't been on a voting gauntlet, which usually guarantees a banner. He hasn't received a refine, so he was never on a new power banner. He was immediately added into the game and he never showed up in a Tempest trial. So as far as units go, I'm pretty sure he's the only one that's never showed up on a banner. Although I could be completely wrong. There's over 900 units in this game. I wouldn't be very surprised if I missed one. Although units that only appeared on one single banner, whether that was because of a refine or a bounty hero battle or whatever the case may be, that includes, but not limited to, Saizo, Olivia, and Sarah. Saizo only ever appeared on the banner once, and that was when he got his refine. After that point, he was never on the banner after that point. Meanwhile, with Olivia, the only reason she ever showed up on a banner was because of a Tempest trial, which was for a Tempest trial that occurred all the way back in March of 2018 where you could get a free Jerome. This was one of those weird times where they also didn't have a direct idea of what they wanted to set with Tempest Trial units in general. This was when they decided to mix and match all of it. So this is when they, for whatever reason, had Olivia on here with Donald and Cherish. Well, Cherish I kind of get because Jerome's the freebie, but they just kind of did whatever because yeah, and sticking with Awakening for a bit more, anybody remember Legendary Female Robin, especially back in the day where mythic heroes weren't really a thing and Legendary Female Robin was the only colorless legendary for a long while? This was because there was a lack of five star colorless units. So up until the Legendary Azura banner, she was on nine consecutive Legendary Hero banners, which I'm not entirely sure how people felt on because at the time, Legendary Female Robin wasn't really a good unit. And you can still argue nowadays she isn't exactly the best but she's a lot more usable now than she was way back when so colorless was usually avoided for that reason although she was a dragon and i don't remember if that meant anything in particular but she was and so was ninian who was the last added dragon you could summon for for the entirety of book one and this occurred all the way back at version 1.1 the next dragon that you were able to summon for didn't occur until 
version 2.1, which was basically a full book after. Other than that, you have Legendary Sheeta, who is our 776 unit added to Fey, meaning that it was entirely possible for it to be Nana. But I don't really think they thought of it, and I don't think you should really expect much out of our thousandth hero, which is going to happen if I'm remember it correctly sometime this year if not early next year so don't expect the thousandth hero to really be anything unless they are paying attention to that one for whatever reason but not legendary Sheeta. and for units that were added relatively quick into the game you had xander getting three back-to-back -back versions in the span of five updates the first variant of xander you were able to actually play with was the spring alt and it was only after a certain bet they decided to give him out as a grand hero battle unit and then eventually we got the summer norian banner which you guess it summer xander and as for the fastest unit to receive an alt in the game that title is going to go to Reed, who had his legendary version added on December of 2018 only to then get a new year alt less than a month or a bit over a month after they added his legendary alt and before closing off the video I did want to bring mention to two other things starting with Yuri who appeared in seven banners not including being the freebie that we got from the white hair and cup event where we just got a free three houses unit seven banners in less than a year starting all the way back from his debut banner in September of 2021 to July of 2022. And it wouldn't surprise me if anybody and everybody had Yuri at this point. And lastly, there is the potential of Grail banners, which was something I experimented with maybe way early into my YouTube fade thing, whatever you want to call it, where I was just uploading face stuff. You, you, you get what I mean. During events such as A Hero Rises, it's entirely possible to vote for Grail units, meaning that if they are able to get the top eight spot and they make it past round one in a voting gauntlet, it's entirely possible to get a Grail unit on a summonable banner, which isn't something that we've ever had. And while it's something I don't necessarily encourage nowadays because we have so many more units that are definitely worth summoning for instead it's something that can happen which i don't expect it to ever happen but the fact that the possibility exists is really interesting to me and that's gonna be about it for the video i'm sure this wasn't everything when it came to just banner history because there's so much history when it comes to this game in general that i'm fairly certain that i probably missed something somewhere but if there was let me know down below and if you want to see more videos like this make sure to like and subscribe and until next time I'll see you later.